So the third portion of this chapter, um, matter and measurement, is temperature and density. So we've talked about all the other units, uh, but we still haven't talked about temperature. Okay, so that's what we'll talk about. And in temperature, there are three units, which also we will cover, and density is a secondary unit, okay, which is why I covered it here and not in the other uh, PowerPoint, okay? So anyhow, let's talk about temperature first. Temperature is the measure of hotness. And then we know that there are three units for temperature. Kelvin is the SI unit. So Celsius or centigrade is degree C, Fahrenheit is degree F, and Kelvin is just Kelvin. Now, to convert one unit to another, it's not as simple as what we had before with uh, converting grams to milligrams or you know meters to uh, millimeters it's not like that you need formulas for this because um, their units are a little bit different and i'll explain that in a second okay so you need to have these formulas which i provide to you in the exam and you have it in your homework and stuff okay but kelvin is the easy one because you just take the celsius and you add 273 to it okay and that should uh, do the conversion now one funny thing is that um, even though Kelvin is the standard unit the SI unit we actually don't have any measuring device for Kelvin most of the time we end up measuring in Celsius or Fahrenheit so all our thermometers none of them are in Kelvin okay but anyhow okay so here let me show you something that is kind of interesting and why we have these formulas okay is on the top over here, what you'll see is the boiling point of water. So boiling point of water is 212 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Celsius, 373 Kelvin. Freezing point of water, 0 degree Celsius, 32 degree Fahrenheit, and then 273. Okay. Now remember 273, 0, 0 degree Celsius plus 273 is 273, which is correctly the freezing point of water. So now look at the difference between Celsius as in zero to the boiling point and that is 100 Celsius. The difference between the boiling point of water in Kelvin is 100 Kelvin. The difference in the freezing point and the boiling point of water in Fahrenheit is 180 Fahrenheit, which means one Fahrenheit is not equivalent to one Celsius or one Kelvin. However, one Celsius is equivalent to one Kelvin. That's why you can do this calculation easily because all you need to do is add Celsius to 273. However, the conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius is not that equivalent because the numbers are different. That's why you have to use these formulas. Now, to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, this is the formula you use, right? To go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, this is the formula. Now, remember, Fahrenheit is a larger number than Celsius. And you can remember either the boiling point of water or you can remember the freezing point. It's up to you. Okay, if you like cold weather, go for the freezing point. So, zero degrees Celsius, right? That's the freezing point. But the freezing point of water is 32. So, I mean, you already you can see the difference right here, which means Fahrenheit is a larger number, which means when you're converting Celsius to Fahrenheit, you should get a larger number, which is why there is plus 32. When you go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you should get a smaller number, hence the minus 32 over here. These are just little ways you can check if your final answer is correct or not. Again, going from Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, you should get a larger number. Going from Celsius to Fa no, going from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you should get a smaller number. Okay? There is no direct conversion from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. So you have to go through Celsius. Okay, for that, there is no direct conversion. So these are just little things that, you know, you kind of have to remember to do. Um, so here is an example okay so i've just taken fahrenheit um, and asked you to convert into celsius and kelvin so again use these formulas so i want to mention one thing about the negative numbers okay because when you get into negative fahrenheit you're getting into really um, small numbers and at that small number the difference between fahrenheit 
and Celsius is not that much. I mean, I was just saying you can check your answer, but what happens is when you get into that many negative numbers, then your difference is not that much, okay? Because you're subtracting 32. So if you're subtracting, subtracting, right? So minus number, and then you're subtracting. So you're not left with, you know, much of a number there. So um, I hope you see what I mean. And that's why I put this calculation here so that you will understand if your number doesn't make any sense and it's okay because in Fahrenheit, that's kind of what happens, okay? Now, once you have your answer in Celsius, then it's easy to convert it to Kelvin, okay? Again, your answer should be in three significant figures because that's the data that you've been given, okay? So now let's talk a little bit about secondary units. And secondary units are just a glorified term for when you have two units. So whether it is area or volume or density, speed, all of these are considered to be uh, secondary units because you need two units or more in order to get the final unit. Your final unit sometimes also tells you what the formula is. Right, so meter times meter will give you meter square, length times length, okay? So usually your units will tell you how to even do that calculation. So keep a, you know, a, you don't have to remember the formula every time. Sometimes you just look at the units and that helps you, okay? We're gonna focus on density, okay, for um, this, for our portion. So density gives an idea of how dense a substance is. Well, duh, yeah, that's what it says in the name. So yes, okay. So density is the amount of weight in volume, okay. So if you have a small volume and a large weight, then it's dense, right? If you have the same volume but not enough mass, then it's going to be light, okay. So example here is for cork. So a cork, for example, will float on water but the stone will sink because the same size of cork and stone, stone has a heavier mass, okay? So it will sink. First of all, let me just mention why I talk about water here is because water has a density of one gram per milliliter, meaning every one milliliter of water weighs one gram or one gram of water occupies one milliliter of volume. Okay, it's a nice number, one. I just mentioned to you before about the boiling point and freezing point of water in Celsius, zero and 100, and here is density, one. I mean, water is just a beautiful substance, okay, just for that reason also, okay, just for the data points. Okay, so density is mass over volume. That's what it is. So here are some examples, okay, for densities for you. So aluminum is 2.7 grams, and I wrote cc over here, which is centimeter cube, but you can also write a cm to cube right here, okay? So I wanna give all different things to you, so that way, when you look at any problem, you are not going to be lost, like what the heck is this, right? So I try to give you a variety of things. So you can write it as cm to the power of three, or you can write cc, both are the same things, okay? So if there is something that is a solid, it is then measured as in centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, right? So that is centimeter cube. If something is a liquid, it is going to be measured in a volume, uh, liquid volume unit like liters or milliliters, all right? So that's how it goes. Okay, so aluminum 2.7 grams per cc, iron is 7.87, gold, oh my God, 19.3, so pretty heavy there. And then oil, for example, is 0 0.8, okay? And remember, water was one. So you can see easily what's going to sink in water, what's going to float in water. And I'm not saying that everything has to be in relationship to water. I'm just saying it's an easy number, right? So it's kind of easy to see like, you know, what's going to happen with the relationship to water. That's all. Okay, so calculating density is really fairly easy because here is your formula, okay? Density is mass over volume. And if density is mass over volume, 
then all you need to do is whatever mass is given to you divided by volume and you get the density. I mean, there's nothing simpler than calculating density. Now remember, keep your units straight and make sure you keep your significant figure straight. Okay, so this one is cal calculating density. This one here is calculating volume. So here is your formula again. So let's look at the problem first. The sample of gasoline has a density of 0.325 grams per mils. What is the volume of 460? And we're going to put the decimal point to show you that this is three sig fig, so you don't ignore the zero grams of gasoline. So you're supposed to find the volume. So here is your density uh, formula. To find the volume, you can do cross multiplication. So volume goes up here, density comes down here. So mass over density, so mass over density, and you will get your answer. And make sure you get it in the right significant figure. See, so this one, since you have to bring it down to three sig figs, it's a nice one to put in exponent form, okay? So that's it, that's really all you have to do for density, okay? There's nothing much going on. Um, I will write the formula in the previous slide also, okay? So you have it there, but otherwise it's here also. We're pretty straightforward. Okay, and I think that's about it uh, for this small portion here, okay? Alrighty.